Hello there, you guys. Oh my gosh. You know what? I've been thinking that it would be fun to do kind of a new series for us on um, Patreon and YouTube. And that occurred to me after doing my last live stream with you guys on YouTube. It was so fun to just sit down and, and just have a little natter together and just kind of ramble about stuff. Um, so I thought that I could maybe every month I will strive to do this, but I don't know if it will happen. Um, it would be fun to sit down and of course tell you the events for the month that are going on with the studio. But I'd also love to share like some of the themes that we're going uh, through in lessons. Sometimes, you know, we get in this zone where it's like, let's focus on, let's go down the rabbit hole of like ancient history and learning about really, really, really ancient music. We've done that many times. Um, sometimes we go down the rabbit hole of like working on the left hand. Sometimes we go down the rabbit hole of working on the right hand. Um, you know, whatever it is. So sometimes we'll like spend a few weeks just kind of with the warm up dealing with this kind of theme and having a little time to explore it a little bit more fully. And so I thought we should we should kind of go over whatever the theme has been as well. And granted, it's just the start to the month, but sometimes, you know, at the beginning of the month, some ideas will come to me as I'm planning out everybody's lesson and it's like, oh, we should go through this. So anyway, I thought I could share that. And then also, I would love to spend some time also just telling you some things that I'm working on and what I've been up to. And, you know, it'll be fun to see how that goes season by season as well, because sometimes what we do depends on the season as well. Um, so anyway, this is the first video of that. And we kind of did that a while ago, but let's get back on <laughs> onto the... Um, monthly events calendar what i've been up to what i'm liking what i'm doing um, what you're doing i'd love to know in the comments as well so um the first thing let's see i've written down some ideas let me tell you what's going on in the studio first and then we'll go off into the rabbit hole of whatever it is that i'm <laughs> whatever it is that i'm doing so if you're interested so the first thing i think is the calendar so it's july it's 2023 july and it's July 10th today. And um, last Thursday, we had our first violin group class. I need to change it because it's no longer really a violin group class. It's a violin viola group class. So I might just call it, I don't know, the string class or practice bubble class, or I don't know. If you have a name that we should call it, please let me know. But last Thursday evening at 8.30, we had our little first group class for the month and it was really nice. We actually started out with doing some breathing exercises. Before the class I've always put on a little YouTube video of something for us to listen to, something that I'm really enjoying musically um, or just something that comes to me at the last minute that I think is interesting to share and so we spent a little time listening to um, two musicians playing in the Notre Dame Cathedral and that was magnificent. We were just overwhelmed with the beauty of the sound and it actually tied in really well with the fact that that's the theme of that has kind of been the theme this month is just getting a beautiful resonant uh, tone and sound and we've been kind of exploring different ways of doing that using the contact point the bow where you're going to put the bow figuring out how much weight you want to use thinking about bow speed and of course lining everything up so that you're lining aligned <laughs> so that you can move with ease and you can kind of manipulate those things and change the sound and the color and the tone and the resonance of your instrument but often you know in order to do that we actually ourselves need to figure out how to become a little bit more relaxed and so to begin our class um, our little violin viola group class which you're going to tell me the new name of hopefully um, we actually started with a little qigong exercise and we've had a qigong teacher come and teach a guest artist class more on that uh, those you know later on um, and I actually would love to have him come back but um, his name is Mark Forgetti and he's a wonderful qigong teacher he's my qigong teacher back in Arizona when I used to live there um, anyway so we did this little qigong exercise before the class started where you just put your fingers together put your hands together and it's like you open a book and then you fold your knuckles together and you rotate around like this and you just kind of go like this and it's a nice little 
exercise where you're kind of letting go of stuff. And if you go the opposite way, instead of opening the book to look at you, you open the book away and you're scooping up the good stuff, you're bringing the good stuff forward. Um, and especially if you tie your breath to it. So if you imagine, you can do all sorts of things. You could do a fourfold breath where you breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, and then hold for four. Um, or you could just do a one rotation and then a very slow. Exhale, kind of tie your breath to that. And then you would just kind of eventually, after you've done as many of these as you want to go in one direction, then you just kind of do it the other way. And perhaps in Qigong, there's a certain number that you'd want to do. But Qigong, you just are focused, our body's filled with energy and we're just focusing the energy here um, in the hands and in the wrist for this little exercise, it seems. So anyway, we started out with that. And it was a lovely way to begin our class. Um, we all just felt so relaxed and then we were able to relaxedly set things up and then kind of go through the warm-up exercise thinking about the tone it just was a really nice way to kind of set the set the vibe for the class I think I even pulled a fairy card sometimes I pull a fairy card I usually do that for our um, virtual studio circles all the links are below if you are wondering about the patreon <laughs> experience um, it's in the YouTube description. Um, but anyway, so so that was our first class for July, our first violin viola class of, of July. It's in the evening. And our next one is going to be on Thursday, July 20th. And they're lovely because we have a little thing that we do together, but then I also kind of divide the, the lesson into practice time and, you know, five, ten minutes of practice time where you can actually practice whatever you want to do. So you can get a little practice in too, but there's kind of a little inspiration for you from moi <laughs> to help us kind of, you know, just get in, in the zone. And it's fun to have a little community practice session, especially if you bring a cup of tea or like I was rambling about um, on the little short, you bring some chocolate raisins and then whenever you do something really well, you can have a chocolate raisin as a little reward, you know, whatever you wanna do. You could bring a, a little glass of wine or whatever. Um, but those are our violin viola little group classes that we have twice a month. Um, and like I said, the next one is on July 20th, which is a Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. They're always at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, every other Thursday. So the following Thursday, which is July 27th, we've got our guest artist class for July with Alexander Kitzlitzen. And he is an amazing, amazing violinist, violist, music producer, performer. Um, he's just really, a, and such a kind and sweet and interesting person. I'll have to link his Instagram and website below. Um, but he's going to come to a, uh, come to a class with us on Zoom and talk about basically a lot of things, but the, the transition from being a student to being um, a performing artist. And because, you know, the path really isn't laid out for us as musicians, we become very highly trained in, in our instrument and we never really think about, you know, well, then what are you going to do with it? You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, play in an orchestra, but it's really hard to get a good job in an orchestra. And um, it can just be very expensive to be able to go and take orchestral auditions. It's very time consuming and soul, <laughs> soul crushing to do that. Um, but anyway, it's just, uh, th there's not really a clear path for us. And so he's really chiseled out a really interesting corner of the universe for himself. Um, and he's done some very interesting things and just is growing and flourishing. And I want to know, you know, what he's been doing and more about what he's doing with his instruments. He's got these electric instruments as well. He's an amazing improviser. I have no idea how he learned how to, how to improvise. It's just like so wonderful his grasp of of just music it's like he's fluent in all these languages musically as well so um that will be on thursday the 27th of july at 8 30 p.m and actually all these classes are recorded so if you can't make it live you can always listen back to it later but it's better if you're there live because then we can all be in that little vibe together 
And then um, our virtual studio circle is the last Friday. It's usually the last Friday of the month, so July 28th at 7.30 p.m. And that's just a little hour class where we get together, our little music bubble community gets together, and we have a little time to just do some chatting about this or that. Sometimes we talk about performances that we've been to, if, if anyone's been to any interesting performances. If anybody has some interesting things that, that have come on their radar that month they want to share, it's also um, a little time for us to contemplate, you know, what we've been doing musically and to just kind of share that or just listen. But it's also a practice performance class, so it's a time for us to literally just unmute yourself if you want and you can say hi i am terrified but i want to play <laughs> i want to play this for you it's not perfect but i just want to practice playing it and see what it's like to be in that performance space and so we all just kind of say yay and uh, go for it and you know often there if the person wants there's a little bit of time to just like practice starting it a few times because often it's the practicing and getting the the vibe right getting everything lined up getting your breath taking having some poise you know just being able to figure that out sometimes because sometimes when you're on the spot it's like oh my gosh oh my gosh okay blah, blah, blah. you know but it's like you have to slow down slow down <laughs> and so it's just fun so we have a lovely time together that's going to be the last friday of the month that's our virtual studio circle so those are all the things that are happening with the studio and Patreon that you're welcome to join. We have a little tiny community there of adult uh, students from all over the world and in the studio that are able to participate and just kind of join our little time together. And if nothing else, if you do no more practicing during the month, at least you came to those things. You sat with your instrument, you had some high vibe, fun time with your instrument. And even if you are quite an advanced player, like one of my friends is actually, um, he's a, a, he has a master's degree in viola performance and he is an incredible violist. But you know, sometimes when we graduate school, um, we just are in this weird place where we're just like, you know, a little bit out of tune in relation to our own instrument. And we just need to have some playful, fun time with the instrument. Cause often we're like with the instrument, it's like, oh, well, this is out of tune. And it's like very analytical. Um, when you're a classically trained musician, sometimes you're just like in the, the always refining, perfecting, uh, hyper perfectionist state of mind, you know, with your instrument. But sometimes we need to, we, and we actually don't know how to come back to the just playful, fun aspect of playing music. Um, I know that happened to me. So, so you can join it even if you are quite an advanced player. You don't have to just, you know, you don't have to just be on the beginning track to join any of the classes. So because they're just fun, it's just having fun with music, learning and uh, having a little community time together. So um, anyway, let's see, those are the things that are going on this month. Like I might have mentioned, one of the themes that we've been working on is our sound. I think I did talk about that. I've been rambling for a while now. I hope this is recording. It is, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, tone. Tone has been something that we've been thinking about a lot. And so in lessons, we've been just starting out with like five minutes of trying to breathe and feel what it feels like to put the instrument up, just sit there with the instrument. For a couple breaths, you know, kind of get in violin or viola mode. And then we start to play with certain things like the contact point. Um, so we'll run through like a couple reps where we're just like playing with a little bit of bow, for example, relaxed, a little bit of bow, but just at closer to the bridge and see what that sounds like on your instrument. And then we'll do maybe some reps where we're on the opposite side, so we're closer to the fingerboard and just using a little bit of bow and seeing how we have to change the weight and the speed to adapt to the different contact point. Or sometimes we're more between in the middle, between the bridge and the fingerboard. And sometimes we're at the frog, sometimes we're at the middle, sometimes we're at the tip, sometimes we're using the whole bow. So we're just having a little time to play around with the what kind of sound you're getting in different areas of the, of the bow, juggling contact point. Um, bow speed and weight and our own, you know, relative ease <laughs> on the instrument, trying to find some ease, you know. 
Um, but as far as things that I've been doing, let's go down that rabbit hole. So um, I've been trying to, last month actually in June, I started realizing that there's a lot of things that I am trying to do every day and not able to do every day. And I just wanted to like figure out how to track the things that I wanted to do better. And if you're, <laughs> if you're in our little community, you know that I love the idea of a gold star. I always loved stickers. Oh my gosh, as a child, I one of my earliest memories is stealing all of the stickers from my nursery school uh, teacher, and I felt so terrible, and she was so upset with me, and I was just like so happy, like putting the stickers everywhere, and um, and then she was very upset and very angry with me, and I just. Um, Anyway, I've always loved stickers. <laughs> I also remember in sixth grade, my teacher in sixth grade had like a little um, thing on our desk. And if we did our homework very well, he would give us a beautiful sticker. Or if he if we did something very, very well, like excellent, ex you know, we did something that showed excellence. Um, he would give us a, a really wonderful sticker. And if you got so many stickers by the end of the month, like you got something, I don't know. It was a great way to motivate the class. <laughs> and actually it's right there on your desk so you could see the beautiful stickers that you had accumulated for the month. He was a wonderful teacher. So anyway, um, these are all of the things that I've been tracking. Um, and you can see I have, I've been using the, this, this is um, just like a little thing you just tear off and um, you can circle what month you're in, you can put what the habit is, and then you put down, you know, these are all the days of the month. So you can put two little habits that you wanna track. It's just really easy. And what I do is I just tape these to my desk and I use some gold star stickers to actually just track if I'm spending any time at all. Um, so even if it's just like five minutes, I think I would at least want to spend five minutes of, on the task because um, I know that even if I just spend five minutes giving some attention to the thing that I'm trying to like keep in my life, it's better than not doing it at all because then it's not really in my life as much, you know? So I just want to be able to keep track of what I'm doing and how much time I'm spending with things. So. Um, at the end of June, I decided that I wanted to just kind of track my calories a little bit more because I've, my clothes have been feeling a little bit tight, <laughs> which is not a nice feeling to have in the summer. And so um, I just kind of wanted to stay below a certain amount of calories. And so I've been tracking those. So that was helpful. And the nice thing is that like once you have a bunch of stars in a row, like you succeeded in tracking and staying below a certain number of calories, you want to kind of maintain it. And so it's been nice. And then I also I'm exploring audio recording, um, not just video recording, but like audio recording. I'm working on some projects with uh, recording and I also have my project where I'm writing a book of songs for you guys, magical musical songs. And so one of the ways that I'm at this point in my process of writing the songs is I'm editing them. And so it helps me to actually record the parts in GarageBand and then listen back to it. And I'm able to kind of tweak things or notice, oh, this needs like more of an intro or this needs more of an end or I need to kind of wrap it up better or this is kind of boring or it helps me like put in dynamics and things like that. So um, I've been working on recording audio stuff, but I've also been working on um, my book. And so those are two separate things, but kind of related. And so I separated them and that's been nice to be able to see my tracking on that. And then also, of course, recording videos. Recording videos is very important for, um, for my business because a lot of you meet me just from YouTube. And um, so I want to make sure that my content for you is interesting and I'm, you know, always kind of putting things out uh, to some extent. Of course, Patreon is where everything comes out weekly, guaranteed. <laughs> YouTube, sometimes I forget. I'm so sorry, you guys. Sometimes I just need to get back on the ball of making sure everything comes out every week for you. Um, and of course, it'd be nice to do a monthly live stream like we talked about in the live stream the last one that we did. So I'm also tracking playing my instrument, playing the viola, playing the violin, making sure that I actually do that. Um, and then 
exercising and learning French. So one of the cool things that I've done with um, learning French and exercising is that I use my tablet and I just go to the Babbel app, which I love Babbel, and I just put this on my treadmill and I just go for a walk and I practice my French and go for a walk for 30 minutes. So I'm getting 30 minutes of French in, usually um, almost every day. And that's been a really good way to actually combine it because I notice like if I'm just sitting on the couch doing my French class on Babbel, it's not like retaining in my mind as well. Whereas if I'm walking, it's kind of a different physical state to be moving. Your brain is working better. Um, and your memory, you're actually able to remember things a little bit better when you're moving for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but that's been awesome. So I noticed that actually combining those two things together, you know, in that book, Atomic Habits, where is that? Um, Atomic Habits. Oh, here. Oh, well, I can't get it because it's <laughs> there's a lot of books balanced on it. There's a great book, Atomic Habits, which you could listen to on Audible or you could... Um, uh, you know get the book but one of the things he talks about is is seeing if you can kind of combine things that you want to do and that's been neat like you know when you brush your teeth you could do a couple squats for example or you could like walk in place get a little bit of extra movement so that combining the habit of already brushing your teeth with just moving a little bit you kind of get two in one so that's been very interesting um, with my exercise, I try to do kettlebells or some kind of weight three, three, to three times a week. Um, I try to walk. One thing I haven't been doing for some, I think I just, um, I've been having some physical issues. Um, but I used to run a couple times a week as well, just for 15 minutes at a time or 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. I stopped doing that um, for about a month and a half. Just I've been having some physical issues. And... Um, I would really like to get back on track with that just because I'm feeling a little bit better and uh, I notice that when I'm when I do my run I listen to music and I do a lot of exploring with music and I can like t get in the zone with the music so much better when I'm actually exercising it's like um, it's like a wonderful relationship with the music <laughs> that you get when you exercise and so I miss that and uh, Anyway, so that's been that. I've also been, um, oh, there was something that I, I oh, Audible. I, I have always been a big fan of Audible. Um, and one of the things that I'm listening to this month is, uh, it's from The Great Courses. And it's, uh, it's called, um, oh my gosh, Audible, is it on my tablet? Uh... I'll have to link it below, but in fact, let me just write that down, Audible. Forgot to write that down here. Western history. It's a, it's been a, it's like a class on, on um, Western history, and that has been so fascinating. Because I love, I've always loved the like origins of Western culture. Mu like uh, classical music is like something that has come out of the Western culture and um, so much beauty has come out of the Western culture and the Eastern culture, all cultures, but I'm specifically listening to this course on Western culture or Western history. It's so good. It is so, so good. This professor, professor that's teaching the course. I mean, first of all, this course from the great courses would probably be like several hundred dollars but on Audible, it's like $15 a month for Audible, and um, I'm able to listen to this like 40 court, 40 out, 40 lectures. <laughs> it comes with a great big PDF of all the things from an amazing professor, and so that's been really awesome. I've loved listening to, the, to that. Um, but as far as other books, I don't know what happened to the um, cover for Outlive. Outlive, I kind of have been reading. I stopped reading it uh, because I've read it like three times and it's all highlighted and, you know, it's been intensely studied, this book. <laughs> but anyway, Outlive has been very interesting by Peter Atia. I have the audio, Audible book, which I've listened to several times in the actual book. 
I've told all my students to read that book. Um, I came across the author Damien Eccles listening to a podcast recently, and I absolutely love Damien Eccles. Uh, he has a wonderful YouTube channel, and his book is so fabulous. His book is called High Magic, and it says, A Guide to the Spiritual Practices That Saved My Life on Death Row. And um, I, one of the charities that I support is just with my tiny amount of money as a music teacher, there's two of them, but one of them is um, the Innocence Project. So I guess it's like five or $10 a month that I contribute to the Innocence Project. And the Innocence Project is about um, trying to free wrongfully convicted people, <laughs> people that are actually innocent and on death row or just have been in jail for 20 years and they were, you know, they're innocent people. It, there's so many people actually that are innocent that are in jail, which is horrifying. And so um, the other one I support is, um, oh, what is the name of it? It has to do with like helping um, people that have been human trafficked or, or um, you know, like horrible things that happen, child slavery and all that kind of thing, human trafficking. It helps people that are going to do things about that. So what is that called? Anyway, love this book, High Magic. One of the things that he's been going over in this book that I've been reading so far is talking about um, just like a daily practice of breathing and he calls it the fourfold breath, which we I mentioned earlier, breathing in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, just kind of going through that. Um, but also tying that with like a sun meditation or a lunar meditation. And so the sun meditation is basically you're just imagining that you're filled with the rays of the sun as you breathe in. And when you exhale, you can either exhale the the stuff that needs to go away or you can imagine it growing brighter and the sun like penetrating your body completely through and just like like your aura going into your aura as well so it's like this wonderful sunny meditation and feeling like you're actually would feel if you were in the sun it's so magical i love that um and the other meditation he has is a lunar meditation which you would do in the evening so the same kind of thing and you're just imagining that the moonlight is hitting you and uh, it's the same idea. So that's kind of silvery moon energy that kind of goes through you. It's very cool. And you can do it with the seasons as well. So I really, I just, Damien Eccles is very cool. I would check him out. And what else? You already know that my favorite lipstick this month has been from Chanel. It's the one I'm wearing right now. It's called Zenith from the Rouge Coco Bloom collection number 122 zenith it's a really lovely lipstick i really love it um another thing i haven't told you about is this which is a wonderful um lip plumping line smoothing lip gloss i should put some on it's come it's from the company called lawless beauty lawless beauty and it's called forget the filler and this is in the color daisy pink so I love this so much. It's very hydrating, um, and it really does kind of get rid of those lines. So you see, let's put that on. And it probably needs a minute or two to kind of, you know, because the plumping, line smoothing, nourishing balm, sometimes they need a little moment to actually work. But I really love Lawless Beauty. It's kind of a more naturally natural kind of brand I guess so love it and what else do we have my husband and I went to Maine in July to see some friends in Maine and I ate a lobster <laughs> and some mussels and some scallops and some oysters and it was so delicious. We were completely spoiled by our friend, just absolutely spoiled. We had the best time and sat around the table just eating cheese and eating food and um, talking about the universe <laughs> and playing music. It was just so special. And we have I've never been to Maine. It's a place that I've always wanted to go to. Um, and in fact, when I was 
I guess in my teens and early 20s, I thought about going to Bowdoin, Baudouin, I don't know how you say it, Bowdoin College and the Bowdoin Music Festival in the summer. So it's always kind of been on my radar and it was just really lovely. I mean, when we were there, we the air was clean and fresh. You couldn't you couldn't smell the smoke you know we've had a lot of problems with forest fires from Canada and the smoke coming down to Pennsylvania and New York and everything and it had just been like this blanket of smoke that we've been in for so long and I just wasn't feeling well and to go to Maine just in they live on a farm it was just like instantly felt like a thousand times better <laughs> it was so nice and at night we could hear the crickets and like the nature sounds, it was just, and it was quiet and it was dark. It was just so magical. It was just so, so magical. And then um, our friends are just very special, very sweet. Um, just, it was just like, I, it was just like being in Avalon, being uh, surrounded by fairies. I felt like I was whisked away. And whenever we, when we came back, I just felt so rejuvenated just so rejuvenated after uh being there so that was very special and we can't wait to go back <laughs> so um anyway i think those are all of my updates there's so many things i've been rambling to you about uh let's see 30 minutes i've been rambling so you guys thank you so much um so I, I hope that I can do one of these little sit down rambly monthly kind of videos. Um, and I'd love to know what you've been up to this month. Uh, have you been reading anything or are you also an Audible fan or what's been on your mind? Um, or do you have any projects? Do you want to start tracking your projects too, a la Violin Viola Masterclass style? <laughs> Um, have you been intrigued by Audible? I love I love Audible and Babbel. Have you ever wanted to learn a language? I mean, Babbel is so cool. They even have podcasts and games and things. Combine it with walking on the treadmill. It's it's uh, fantastic. <laughs> um, you guys, I hope to see you soon. I would love for you to check out the Patreon links below. Um, and pop over there and see what's cooking over on Patreon. I really appreciate the support there and the community that we have there is tiny and special, but there's room for it to grow um, into something that's a little bit bigger. So I would love for you to check it out and come and join us, come join some of our little classes, have some fun, and um, I let me whisk you away into, into fairyland and we'll have a great time. Lots of love, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.